What is up, Mets fans? Welcome back to a special episode of the Mets Up Podcast. As you can see, sitting next to us, we've got Francisco Lindor. You know him well, Francisco. <laughs> thank you for coming out and doing this with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah. You just had the birth of your second daughter, Amapola. Yeah. Yeah. Take baseball out of it. How's it feel to welcome your second daughter into the world and juggling that with baseball and everything? It's, it's amazing. It's amazing and uh, it's a, a bit scary. Uh, for some reason with Kalina, I wasn't scared at all to change diapers, pick her up and do whatever <laughs> I got to do. I don't know if I got used to Kalina. Now with Amapola, I'm like a little bit more like, I'm softer with, with her. I'm like, I'm a little bit more timid for some reason. But it's, it's, um, it's my wife did an amazing job. I'm super proud of her and happy to have two girls, three girls now. Yeah. <laughs> Kalina's birthday is November, correct? Yeah, November yeah. 4th. So that probably was a whole different element as well, like having it happen, like out of the season as opposed to into the season. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It, it, it is night and day difference. Um, I was able to be with Kalina every single day um, for the first six months, I would say, of her life. Um, but with Amapola, it's a little different, you know, like I, I, um, I want that bond. Um, my connection as, as men, our connection with our kids don't start for me, don't start until they, they're actually out, you know, when they're in the belly. You, try, you can try to play all cute and stuff with your wife and say, yeah, I feel it, I hear it, you know. Um, but it, there's no connection, at least for me. Um, when they come out, you know, that's when the connection starts. And it's a little little different. I, I try to be with Amapola as much as I can um, and just talk to her constantly so she can, you know, get more a little bit more familiar yeah. with my voice and my, my, my smell, I guess. Yeah, now bring baseball back into it. Since Amapola was born, you have been on fire at the plate in 324, slugging percentage is over 700. You think she might be your good luck charm? Yes and no. Um, I don't want my my kids to have the pressure of they having <laughs> to, um, all my success depends on them. Um, but at the same time, um, I saw how hard my wife worked and I didn't take that for granted. Um, and. It, it's baseball, you know, you're going to have ups and downs, I think. Um, if I would have had this at the beginning of the year, um, probably people wouldn't really say much. They wouldn't, they wouldn't care. But now it worked out that it was in the week that my daughter was born. So um, let's give all the credit to her. <laughs> <laughs> would you say uh, baseball players are pretty superstitious? We saw you change up your hair. Is that like a superstition thing? Or? Not at all. Not at all. Um, as, you guys can tell I wear many different colors on a daily yeah. basis. I don't, I'm not superstitious. I don't believe in that. I mean, I dreamed of having, um, of playing in the big leagues and having gear, having my own shoes. Why would I limit myself to one cleat? Yeah, Why would I limit point. myself to one glove? You know, just because I made a good play yesterday, just because I got two hits the day before. Yeah. Nah, you know, yeah. I, nah, I'm gonna keep on rotating them. I'm blessed to have all I have, everything I got. So why not use it? You mentioned make a good play and don't change the glove. You have been making a lot of good plays recently, and now we're on a full half season without the shift. How has it been to adjusting now without the shift as a shortstop? It's been great. It's been great. It's um, one of those I have a lot more ground to cover, so I take a lot of pride on it. You know, I, I want to get to every single ball. Um, there's there's um, plays that I don't get to the baseball. I know I should have gotten to the ball. Um, so then those are the ones that actually like they they stay on me a little longer because um I know I could have had the baseball and making good plays, they're fun, you know, but um they should be made. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So the ones that I don't make, those are the ones that stay with me a little longer. Talk about the other rule changes too, the pitch clock. Everybody talks about it from the pitcher's perspective, mm -hmm. but on the hitter side, how have yeah. you been feeling like adjusting? Um First of all, I, I like it because um, games are much faster. Yeah. Um, as a parent, uh, and only imagining what I would go through when I take my daughters to a baseball game, if I were taking them a few years ago, um, getting home at midnight because yeah. the game finished at 11. By the yeah. time they get to bed, shower them and go through homework, and then they got to get up at 6 in the morning to go to school. Why would I go through that? Yeah. You know? So now that the games are a little faster, that's one point of view where I see I can appreciate that. And then the other one, the adjustment period was, it was tough at the beginning and it's still challenging at times. I'm focusing on my plan, my approach, what I want to do in the batter's box. I'm paying attention to the pitcher. And then all of a sudden the clock is there. I look at the clock and then I try to get back into the box, into the moment and 
it, it was it was tough. It was yeah. tough to adapt. That's why you see a lot of the the guys that were coming up from the minor leagues in the plate and with the clock were having success earlier yeah. mm-hmm. um, because guys were they knew what was happening. We saw a great video that the Mets put out on their social media. I think it was either yesterday or the day before where. People were in the dugout talking about their favorite player, <laughs> all sorts of stuff, and you come out behind them and surprise them. Yeah. What's uh, what's some of the best fan reactions you've had, either at the ballpark or even just out in the city or anywhere? To be quite honest, the best one is when they don't even know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best one because I can have a, a real conversation without them being shocked. Yeah. Um, uh, but the funny ones are the ones that they don't say much. They, yeah. They, they talk all this game that they go, what they're gonna say and now yeah. so they meet me in person and then they go blank. <laughs> By the time they react, I'm gone. Yeah. You know, so um, those are always funny. But the best ones are the ones I can be in a restaurant and have a conversation on the in the airplane anywhere randomly. Yeah. You just have conversation with them and they tell me about their life and then I, I, I tell them absolutely nothing all my life and then when I do tell them, I'm all too take off and yeah. they're like, oh. Like, that's yeah. who he is. Yeah, okay, so. got it. Yeah. Finally got it. Yeah, yeah. Click. You've made a lot of big plays in your career, mm-hmm. you know, big at bats, big plays in the field. Are, is there any that like really stands out to you as the most memorable? Oof. Um, there was one in Cleveland adult play. Andrew Miller was pitching. He came in to, he came in to leave that inning. And I believe Donaldson or Batista was hitting. Uh, and they hit a uh, short land drive to me, one hop. Turned the whole play, got yeah. out of the inning. Um, that was to me one of the most memorable because Miller said the ball's coming to you, and I was <laughs> I was scared. I was like, oh my god, the ball's coming to me. I'm gonna have to make this play, um, and I was able to turn the whole play. That was yeah. fun. You can just pull it back a little bit more now. We know you're a student of the game, baseball mm-hmm. historian. If you had to name. Your Mount Rushmore of all-time shortstops. Your top four shortstops. See, of I've been all time. I've been looking at this on Instagram and everywhere. I didn't want to do it. Uh, um, but, Put you on the spot. Uh, yeah. Um, shortstops. Um, Larkin. I will put. This is why I don't want to do it. Um, Jeter. Austin Smith. He's not a shortstop, but Roberto Alomar. That's fair. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. Really yeah. this counts. You were talking about your shoes before, your guy who has like a lot of style. Mm-hmm. I have been told I dress like a big middle schooler because I just usually wear like a t-shirt <laughs> and shorts. So like what are some things that maybe I could get to like up my fashion game, my style? The number one thing, wearing colors. Okay. And then not being afraid of wearing oversized stuff. Interesting. Like just textures and sizes. And colors are very important into the fashion world. I think if you can mix match, um, texture, and whether it's something baggier with something a little smaller, um, something crop top, it's mix matching. But yeah, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Playing off that, I know how bad you want to um, remodel Mark's style. If there was one teammate you could remake his style, who would you do? Guillaume. Yeah. And the reason why Guillaume is because he's got such a nice beard, but he doesn't <laughs> do enough with it. Um, and he just shaves his head, so he's not scared to change stuff with his head. Yeah, we saw that. So yeah. like, it, it, Right, so he has so much play, and then there's so much. He wears typically the same colors all over and over. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and Latino, you know, I got to look out for him. Yeah. Yeah. But he's not bad. He just, there's this. More play in it. We're super excited that you're here on the Mets doing this interview with us. We really do appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the season and uh, yeah, wish the best. All right, appreciate you guys.